theory of customs union, trade creation and trade diversion. Welcome to this presentation. This uh, presentation is a continuation of the ideas that have been discussed earlier. That is that of free trade and protection and then we saw the presentation uh, of uh, tariffs and the diagrams that were used to explain tariffs and its effects and the last presentation was on regional trade agreements or what we call as the trade blocks. So this topic is a continuation of that and these are sequentially studied. Jacob Weiner in his work in 1950, the customs union uh, issue, discussed the issue that arises when countries become members of a customs union. Later in 1957, Richard Lipsy um, examined this issue further and he wrote a famous paper, The Theory of Customs Union, Trade, Diversion and Welfare. Prior to Weiner's writing, it was generally believed that the formation of customs union uh, or economic uh, integration does good to the members and there is an increased economic growth and welfare. But uh, Weiner examined this issue in depth and uh, he understood the polit global politics of the trade agreements. He came to the conclusion that the formation of these customs union can have welfare enhancing effects, no doubt, but it can also uh, have some welfare reducing effects. And he coined the two terms, um, trade creation and trade diversion. Trade creation was intended to say what are the good things that happen or the good advantages of uh, forming a customs union and trade diversion was to examine the negative side of the formation of customs union. Now this uh, what presentation that I am presenting to you here is a static uh, uh, partial equilibrium approach. So it will have, it's in the neoclassical framework and therefore it has got many of the assumptions that are necessary to prove this theorem. So we have uh, constant returns to scale, a homogeneous commodity in all the three countries and there are three countries A, B and C. A is a costless country, B is a cheaper country and C is the least cost country before the formation of customs union. This is something which you have to be very clear. So three countries, A is the costless country, B is the cheaper country and C is the least cost country before the formation of the customs union. Then there is perfect competition, no transport cost and production cost determines price. Tariff is the only source of diversion, uh, divergence between the price and the cost of production. So in between when there is a tar tariff that is imposed that will alter the price. Full employment both before and after the formation of the customs union and finally the technique of production are given and constant. Given the static effects we can now examine what are the outcomes of trade creation and what are the outcomes of trade diversion. Let's look at the trade creation first. Now there are two important effects that arise from trade creation. Trade creation can result in the distortion of the prices of commodities, the relative prices of the commodities in the domestic market of the member nations are changed because tariffs on some imports are removed. So the member nations will have a different kind of a tariff a price now because the tariffs have been removed. Now when the tariffs are being removed, what is the kind of effects that an, uh, the, the union can experience? The first one is called the production effect and the second one is known as the consumption effect. In the case of production effect, what we will see is there is a shift in the sourcing of goods. So the, the member nation was buying, the domestic economy was buying from one source but now after the formation of the customs union, it will divert its source of purchase from the earlier source to a member uh, uh, from the customs union from which the commodity will be purchased. This will indicate to better allocation of services is claimed, then uh, there will be uh, inefficient producers who will now leave the market because the tariff uh, 
because of the tariff, the prices are altered and this could see a, a reduction in the uh, prices and changes in the consumer's behavior. We can also see that the producer's benefit will re uh, reduce when the customs union come into operation. We can also look at the consumption effect. The consumers are better off when a customs union is formed because now goods will be available at a lower price. There will be increased consumer surplus and the government also may lose a tariff because now the tariff is not imposed at all. Simple table to understand how the trade creation is affected because of customs union. There are four columns. The first column is country and the production cost. Two is the country A, which is the least efficient of the three uh, uh, countries here. Second one is country B, which is more efficient than country A. And then you have uh, C, which is the efficient but rest of the world uh, economies. Before imposing a tariff on B and C, let us see what is the price of commodity X in country A, B and C. In country A, one unit of commodity X, for example, cost rupees 1000. These are just numbers and rupees just a monetary unit for um, easy understanding. So before imposing a tariff on B and C, the good is available at uh, in country A, which is the least efficient country, at rupees 1000. In country B, which is more efficient than A, at rupees 800. And from customers, uh, from, from supplies in the world, it is only rupees 700. Now, what does uh, country A decide to do? So, the country A imposes a non-discriminatory tariff on country A and uh, country B and country C. So there is a 100% discriminatory tariff. So what happens? The price will double. So the, the domestic price will stay at rupees 100. Then the more efficient market will become 1600. And the most efficient international market will supply the good only at 1400. So the prices have been distorted for, a, uh, for B and C because a tariff has been imposed on country B and C. Now, once this price is ready, let us take the third stage. What is the third step? Country B becomes a member of that customs union in which A is a member. So, what will happen to country uh, B's price? Obviously, we understood from the earlier presentation on regional trade blocks, country A will now remove the tariff on country B. So when country A removes the tariff on country B, the price will be 1000 domestically, but with the uh, country B, which is more efficient than country A, the price will be 800, but the rest of the world will become very costly at rupees 1400. Now the next stage is, what will happen to the production of the good? Uh, because we are not going to purchase from the rest of the world because the rest of the world is 1,400 and the domestic market is 1,000. Whereas the uh, member, the new member of the union can offer that good at 800. So country A will now import from country B at 800 and B will be able to sell it at 800 to A. In this particular case, there is a trade uh, creation that has happened. B did not have a market uh, for this product in country A earlier. But because B joined the customs union, now B has got a new market in country A, which is a trade creation. So now trade, the country which is not producing and selling the good because of the tariff, can actually produce and sell that good to country A. So in this case, it is called as trade creation. A new trade has been created among the two members by um, A uh, buying the goods from country B. Let's look at this uh, diagram. This diagram is the same as the earlier diagram except that I have introduced a new uh, line there, a new price line is there. It's simple to understand. The original uh, demand supply equilibrium. So by now you must be very thorough with uh, the demand supply and equilibrium and the output that is fixed. Let us now assume that it is France who is importing 
agriculture goods from India. Indian agriculture goods, let us assume that it is cheap. Therefore, it is able to sell it at a low price at the green line. So this green line low price is good for the consumers uh, because the consumers are able to consume OQ2 units of commodity and uh, at a lower price which is at P1. The producers however do not benefit from this low price because uh, the production, domestic production will contract to OQ1. That is the green line, the green produce which is coming from India into the India is not a member of that customs union. Now the second case is because India is not a member of the customs union and because country A wants to accommodate uh, a, a member of the customs union, what it will do is it will impose a tariff on India. Now when a tariff is imposed on India, the price of goods coming from India will increase which means the price will rise to the yellow line. So Indian agriculture produce which was being sold at the green line will now be sold at the yellow line. Obviously the members will not purchase that because it has gone very costly. But there is another thing that is happening. The other thing that is happening is instead of buying from the cheap Indian uh, uh, ma uh, market this country will now buy from another member country. So France will now buy its agriculture produce from one of the member countries of that customs union. When France purchases it from the customs, the member of the customs union, that price is costlier than the original green price of India. So that is the red line. The price at which a member of the customs union is able to sell its produce to France is costlier than the price at which India was able to sell at the green price. But now, after the imposition of tariff, the yellow line, the price for Indian goods is higher than the price for the member country goods, which is the red line. It is obvious now what will happen. The answer is that consumers will not purchase from the uh, uh, yellow line because it has become much costlier than the goods that are available in uh, the customs union which is at the red line. So once it comes at the red line, the effects can be seen both in terms of production and in terms of consumption. This red line is a member country's price for the same good which India was selling earlier at a much lower price. So there has been a loss in terms of the consumer. How is the loss for the consumer? The consumer was earlier able to consume OQ2 at a lower price OP1. That has now reduced to OQ4. The consumers will buy less of it because the prices have risen on the red line and they will only purchase OQ4. The consumer loss is there. There is a deadweight loss of unit D, the small triangle D. Now let's look at the producer what happened. Because the price, the red line price is better than the green line price, there will be inefficient producers who will enter the market now. They had otherwise not produced it because the green price line was very low and they could not supply at that price. Now that the member country is, uh, say, member of the customs union is selling at a slightly higher price at the red line, then inefficient producers will enter into the market and they will produce OQ3 units of the commodity. So when inefficient producers are entering into the market because they are, uh, because the uh, member country is selling at a higher price, the inefficiency in the economy will arise now. What is the inefficiency? Inefficiency is a small triangle B. So B is inefficiency which is arising because 
a member country is uh, supplying it and on the other hand we have the consumers lose out because the prices have gone up so this is a loss for a loss of welfare for the uh, member country uh, for the uh, friend, uh, fr uh, for france who was buying it cheaper there are two losses that have happened one is there is an increase in inefficiency because more inefficient firms have entered into production and two that the consumers have lost out because they are consuming less and at a higher price. This is known as trade diversion from an efficient country to a less efficient member country only because they are a part of the customs union. This is where we say there is a trade diversion taking place, a diversion from a good, uh, cheaper country, a less costly country, to inside the customs union. And when it is inside the customs union, the member is costlier than that non-member, in which case the domestic, the customs union member are actually losing out by buying it costly from a, a close member. So because of the association of members inside the customs union, they are protecting each other. They are giving that uh, the demand, the, um, the demand for those goods to the member country. The members are actually losing out instead of buying it from the cheaper country, which was outside of it. So this is how trade diversion takes place. Now there are also uh, the dynamic effects of customs union which is known as the long term effects of customs union. If they are members of the uh, customs union for a long term what will happen? Yes there will be economies of scale, there would be stimulus to investment that can take place because they are now within their own uh, customs union. They will decide which kind of investments they can take place, there will be better utilization of available resources and there could be increased competition inside the customs union. But then the answer whether being a member of the customs union is good or bad, Weiner says there is no one answer. It depends on a series of things. It depends on who is affected by trade, how is the trade between the members of affected, then who has raised the barriers against the imports and from the rest of the world then members, how are they going to remove the uh, non-tariff barriers that are there? How are they going to fix the tariff rates? Oh, these are the uh, kind of issues that has to be considered and only then it can be assessed whether they are benefiting from trade or, they, uh, there, or there is trade diversion taking place. There are certain disadvantages of trade uh, um, so customs union. The loss of uh, independence of members is what we see and also fixing the tax uh, tariff rate among uh, for different goods to different countries is also considered to be a problem. I hope this uh, idea of tariff uh, and its uh, custom role in customs union, the trade creation and trade diversion is clear to you and it will be useful for your examination. Please do uh, uh, click the subscribe button and the like button, post your comments too because it can help me in uh, making more videos for you. Thank you very much.